Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. So a quick review of exponential distribution. Uh, it has one parameters and uh, the shape of distribution actually and a scale of distribution depends on uh, the value of this parameter which is called lambda and it's used to basically to model time to one event, okay? That event could be uh, a failure of a machine or could be basically the time that a customer should wait until it's served. Uh, it has mean and variance, which is one over lambda and one over lambda squared. And this is basically the uh, CDF function of exponential distribution. It also has a very nice property called uh, memoryless property. And it says uh, this conditional probability is the same as this unconditional probability. So basically, if we want to find what would be the probability of a machine works after A plus B hours, and we already know that machine has worked uh, for A hours, it's the same as calculating the probability of uh, X greater than B hours, okay? So it's not trivial and it's not true for other distribution. This is only true for exponential distribution and one more in discrete would be geometric distribution, which has the same property. Okay, we had one example. The next distribution is normal distribution, as you can see. It's basically uh, symmetric. It has a symmetric PDF. It has two parameters. One parameter is the mean, which is mu, and uh, is the center of the distribution. And the other one is sigma. Geometrically speaking, basically the sigma is the distance between mu, which is the center, and the saddle point of distribution. So take derivative twice, and then you find the saddle point. This distance is called sigma. And basically, if uh, sigma is larger, you have larger variation and larger variability. So your distribution is basically wider in that sense. Um, so the expected value of distribution is called mu. The variance is sigma squared. Okay. Uh, important property of normal distributions is uh, any linear combination. Here we only have two. It says if x1 and x2 are normally independently distributed, then the summation of these two is also normal. But we can generalize this property. In gen I mean, uh, we can say if we have x1 up to xn, n id normally independently distributed, that stands for normally independently distributed, with uh, mu as mean and sigma squared as variance, then any linear combination of these guys, these random variables, also follow a normal distribution. Okay? It follows a normal distribution with mu y and sigma squared y. So let's see what mu y is. Mu y is, anybody can tell me? You've seen this before. Is what? The same linear combination. And actually here is mu. It's not mu i because uh, they follow basically. If we want to generalize it, we can put index here as i. So each random variable uh, has its own mean and variance. Then we can put index i here. Okay i from 1 to n. How about the variance of y? Everybody knows? Remember that? Hmm? Uh, each of the points minus the mean squared. That's the definition of variance. That's correct. But for this case, we can have a very basically a simple summation. So the variance of any linear combination of random variables is what? Is the linear combination of the variances with the coefficients squared. 
yes, you guys need quiz. Just want to show you that you've seen this before. That's for expected value. This is for variance. Okay. So what is the most important assumption here? They are mutually independent. And that's why I said they should be normally independently distributed. They should be independent, question. Need to be divided by n, or is it just the summation of no. AI? Summation of AI VUI. That's it. It's exactly uh, this guy. So A1 mu1, A2 mu2 until An mu n. Okay. Fast forward. Okay. And this variance would be A i squared i from 1 to n. Okay? Any questions? Is it clear? Go ahead. What does the and signify? Uh, how we can calculate it or... Oh, it represents, uh, it's kind of like a calculus. In, in normal distribution, what it does, it's basically, if you find this saddle point here, this distance, distance between mu and this saddle point is sigma. So somebody may ask, okay, what is the meaning of sigma? I would say sigma is this distance. And if the distance is larger, then your distribution is wider, okay? But mathematically speaking, that saddle point, if you take derivative of the function twice and then equate it equal to zero, then you calculate the saddle point, which is when the, you know the direction of function changes on that point. Okay? Any other question? Yes, exactly. The standard deviation. Sigma squared is the variance. Yes. So, and it happened to be a parameter of a normal distribution. Okay, so the parameters of normal distributions are exactly mean and variance. It's not true for, for example, for exponential distribution. The parameter for exponential distribution is lambda. Mean is 1 over lambda, and variance is 1 over lambda squared. But for, for normal distribution, the parameters are exactly mean and variance. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Sigma, we can also do things like the amount of the distribution that's contained within yes. sigma, sigma to the right. Exactly, you will see, I think, a in the six next sigma slide. Distribution. Yes, yes. You will see in a minute. Uh, so this is the PDF of normal distribution, as you can see, and uh, basically, again, I need to go back here. I cannot point. Uh, this is the CDF. Uh, so we need, we need to integrate the PDF function from negative infinity to A, and this is not easy to integrate, so there is no close function solution. So what we usually do, we know we use a basically um, a transformation, okay? And I think you've seen this transformation before. If you have any normal distribution with any mean and sigma squared, uh, if you subtract mu, as you can see here, and divide it by sigma, then z is also another normal random variable with mean 0 and a standard deviation 1. So the PDF, if put mu 0 and sigma equal to 1, so the PDF reduces to this. And you can disintegrate this PDF function with numerical methods. Okay? But it doesn't change the probability. So what I mean by that, for example, if you want to look at here, find the probability between mu and 1 sigma, which is this area, this is exactly, this is for a normal distribution with mu, mu and standard deviation sigma. This is a normal distribution with mu equal to 0 and a standard deviation 1. This area here and this area here are same, exactly the same, okay? So it's a little bit uh, narrower, but it's taller compared to this one. You mean here? Yeah, should that just be? Oh, yeah, thank you. Sigma? Yeah, you're right, you're right. This is correct. This is not correct. Thank you for pointing this out. So this should be out of the square root. So this is the correct PDF. Thank you. And 
need to fix this. Okay, so basically what the problem here, this guy, this should be this. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so, and here is a function that you can use in Excel to find the probability. And this is basically uh, some interesting facts. No matter basically what your mu and sigma is, and the probability of x between mu minus 1 sigma and mu plus 1 sigma is 68%, around 68%. This probability increases to 95% when you, have, uh, you are interested in finding probability between minus 2, two, two sigma and plus 2 sigma. Okay? And for 3 sigma, as you mentioned, this probability is 99%, 99.73%, okay? Which is almost all of the distribution. Yeah. This is different than 3C, right? Like, 3 sigma is different than what? Like, the, from minus 3 to plus 3 on the z-axis, is it the same percentage? Okay. The same thing, exactly. So this area here, okay? And this area here are exactly the same. So, I mean, maybe it's not, very, it's not a very good uh, plot, but, but here you have a taller distribution. Here you have a wider distribution. Okay? But the area is the same. Okay. So two important, basically, quantity that we use a lot for normal distribution. One is called CDF, and the other one is Z-value. Uh, CDF... You've seen CDF before. For normal distribution, <clears throat> we show CDF by capital Phi of Z, which is the probability of Z less than Z. So, for example, probability of Z less than equal zero. Okay? So this is called, actually we denote it by Phi of zero. Okay? So what is input here? Your input is a real number. So this is a function, am I right? So this is input. So that's your input, which is a real number between neg negative infinity to positive infinity. What is the output in this case? Is probability. Is phi of z or phi of um, a, or in this case, y of 0, uh, which is probability. is between 0 and 1. Okay? So that's basically phi function. We also have something called z sub alpha, or z of alpha. This is also a function. This is input. And the whole thing is the function or output. So what does it mean? Z sub alpha is a point on x-axis, okay, where probability after this point is equal to alpha. Does it make sense? So if it is Z alpha, then probability after this point should be alpha. Okay? So your input in this case let's say z of 0.5. Your input is this guy, which is probability. What is your output? Your output is this guy, output of the function, which is a real number between negative infinity and infinity. Okay? Is it clear the difference between z and phi? So one difference is right here, as you can see. Input and output. So input here is real number, input here is probability. Output for phi function is 
basically probability output for z function is a real number. So that's one difference. There is also one more difference, another difference here. Anybody can tell me? Look at the it's anchored to the right versus the left. Exactly. So your z alpha, okay, is related to probability on the right hand side. Phi uh, function is related to probability the left side. Okay. So this is important. When you work with table, which has the values for z and phi, and uh, you need to be careful when you want to find, for example, z of 0.05. Okay, so what you see in the table is the left side probability. You will see in a minute what I mean by basically table. Uh, so basically, this is the relationship between z alpha and phi. So two differences. One is difference between input and output. That's why phi should be phi inverse. And the other one is the difference between left and right side probability. That's why instead of alpha, we have one minus alpha, okay? So that's the relationship. And this is also important uh, equation that we use a lot, phi of a negative number is one minus phi of a positive number, right here, okay? I, I, let, let's go through this example. Uh, it clarifies many things, okay? So we have a normal distribution. I'm just curious, how many of you have seen normal distribution or know how to calculate the PDF and stuff? Just raise your hand. Okay, that's a good number. Okay. Uh, we have a normal distribution centered at 40 and variance is 25, and we want to find probability of x less than or equal 37.9. Okay. So what is the first step? Always we need to transform to standard normal by subtracting mu and dividing by a standard deviation. Okay. In this case, our mu is 40 divided by 5. Is it clear? Okay. So what is this guy? This is z. And this is point something. Let's see, 2.1. I'm going to cheat a little bit, 0.42, yeah. So that's probability z less than or equal 0.42, okay? Which is based on the definition is phi of 0.42. So how I can find the phi? We know that the integration is not easy, as you can see here. But they have done it for us using numerical methods, and we have a table. So the real table or chart is much bigger than this, uh, but you, have, you can see just a snapshot of it. Uh, so we want to calculate phi of 0.42. In this case, it's right here. OK, it's back. Uh, so. You can see it's left side probability. That's exactly what we are looking for. And 0 0.4, 0 0.02. So basically, if you write 0.42 as two numbers, 0.4 plus 0.02. And this is basically the first part is in the first column. The second part is in the first row. And all numbers that you see inside the table are corresponding probabilities. Does it make sense? Again, based on first column and first row, you find your number. All numbers inside the table are corresponding probabilities. Oh, no, no, no. 
That's why I made a mistake. <laughs> so it's negative here, and this negative based on the equation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you remember this equation I told you we use? So we're going to use it now. So the negative part is 1 minus phi of positive 1. Okay? Then we need to find this from table. Okay? That negative changes basically this part. So it's 1 minus phi of positive. Okay? Any question? Is it clear? So anytime that we see a negative number, we can switch to positive by 1 minus phi of that. Okay. So let's see. 0 0.4, 0 0.02. So this is the number we are looking for. 0 0.66276. So that number is 0 0.66276. Then we can find 1 minus this is the probability, which is, let's say, 4, 2, 8, oh, 7, sorry, 7, 3, 3, yeah, I hope so, yeah, okay, any questions, is it clear? So as you can see, in this example, input is a number, and we are asked to calculate what? Probability associated with this number. Okay? In the second example, it's the other way around. Probability is given, and you want to find the number. Okay? Any questions? Just write it here. So probability of x greater than a is 0.3783. So it says if this is the probability, what is a? Okay. What is the first step again? We should what? Standardize it. Subtract mu divided by a standard deviation. A minus 40 divided by a standard deviation, which is 5. And this probability is 7A3. Okay? So let me call this guy, this is Z. Let me call this guy B. Okay? Probability of Z greater than a B number is 0 0.3783. Okay? Now I need to use table to find value of B, and then I can find value of A accordingly. Okay? Is it clear? Any questions? Nope. Okay. But here is the point. This is Z greater than B. The table that I have is for what? For left-hand side. What should I do? 1 minus that. Exactly. Complement probability. So I can write this down as 1 minus probability of Z less than B. By the way, I can have equality or not have equality because point probabilities for continuous distribution is equal to zero. Okay? It doesn't really matter. Uh, so probability of Z less than B is, just do some simplification, 7126, let's say. Okay? This is basically phi of B, which I already have in the chart. Okay? So what is the number I'm looking for? Now I need to find the probability inside and find the corresponding number outside. Okay? 
So the probability I'm looking for is 0 0.6217. As you can see, it's right here, 0 0.6217. Okay? And this is 0 0.3, this is 0 0.01. Summation would be 0 0.31. One, I guess. Yes. So that's B. I think you cannot see it here. So let me write it down. There. So basically your B is equal to 0 0.31. Therefore, I can write it down as this. That's a B. 0.31, your A is this guy. Okay? Any questions? Is it clear? Okay, uh, here is one example. I do part A, you can do part B later. It's not very difficult example. We have three random variables which are independent. So it says three uh, shift, uh, shaft actually, so the three parts. The first one, the length of the first one follows a, a normal distribution, the second one, and we also have the third one. Okay, and we assemble these three parts and we get Y, which is X1 plus X2 plus X3. The question is, what is the distribution of Y? What is it? It's normal again because they are independent with summation of mu. And how about variances? So just add the variances off. Exactly. 0 0.16 plus 0 0.25. So this is mu. This is sigma squared. So the second part, I just write down what it says. What is the probability that the linkage will be longer than 16? Point five. I'm sorry, 160.5. Try to solve this. I give you a couple of minutes. You know what? <clears throat> this is the table. see from here. Okay. So you can see it. Actually I'm standing, but you need to I missed the question. Oh you missed the question. the table if you want to see. Anybody? 
Anybody got the answer? Got what? One, two, three, nine. So let's see. Okay. So what is the first step? Subtract mu divided by standard deviation. Actually, this is not x. I'm sorry. That would be y. Because we are talking about linkage, not x. So y. So subtract mu divided by standard deviation y is, um, so this number minus mu, what is mu? 160, and sigma squared is 0.5. So this minus 160 divided by the square root of 0.5, because 0.5 is the variance, okay? which is probability of z greater than 0.5 divided by square root of 0.5, which is the same as saying probability of z greater than square root of 0.5. Okay? And 1 minus probability of z less than 0.5. Why y minus that? Because it's then equal. Because greater than is not in the table. We need to change it to less than. Okay, left side probability. And which is 1 minus phi of 0.71. Okay. Then, so this is in the table. So this is 0.7. This is 1. So this number would be 0.76115. So 1 minus 0.76115. That's the probability. OK? Any questions? We want to stick to um, the like smallest significant digit. Or do we not no, really no, care? no. I mean, so you can say this is, uh, that's enough. And that's exactly the number you get. If you want, just round it. That's fine. Three digits should be fine. Any questions? Okay. So another distribution, continuous distribution, is called chi-squared. Chi-squared distribution has one parameter, and this parameter is called degrees of freedom. And you will see later why we call it degrees of freedom. Okay? The expected value of this uh, distribution is uh, it's the same as degrees of freedom, and the variance is two times degrees of freedom. And you can see when... Um, we change the degrees of freedom, the, change, the, the shape of distribution changes. So what happens when nu or degrees of freedom increases? What happens? It becomes what? Yep, normal distribution, okay? So when nu is, go, actually when nu goes to infinity, or it's a very large number, let's say 30 or more, then your chi-square distribution basically can be approximated by a normal distribution with this mu here, nu, and variance here, 2 nu. Does it make sense? Okay. So instead of using this PDF function, you can use a normal PDF function. Okay. If nu is large enough. But anyways, uh, this is basically... Um, 
the PDF function for chi-square distribution. And this guy here is called gamma function, okay? And gamma function is for A or nu, uh, for integer nu, it's equal to nu minus 1 factorial, okay? So then you can get this guy. Uh, it's not easy to integrate that. So when it's not easy, they give us a chart, okay? It's not easy, but when nu is equal to 2, it's easy to integrate. Just look at the PDF function. If nu is equal to 2, what is that distribution? So if it is 2, I get rid of this guy. And 2 over 2 is 1. I get rid of this guy. And I have 2 here, which is 1 over 2. Exponential of x over 2 is what is the distribution? Exponential. So if nu is equal to 2, this reduces to exponential distribution. And that's why it's integrable. So in the exam, if uh, you will see when you're in homework, you will see some distributions at the chi-square distribution, and you, you can integrate that, okay, uh, if nu is equal to 2. If not, you need to use the table. And here is the table. So one big difference between z table or phi table and uh, chi-square table is what? is the right side and left side probability. So if I go back, so this gives you left side probability. However, this distribution, actually th this chart gives you right side probabilities. Okay? And again, this notation, you've seen this before, uh, for normal distribution, and this is for chi-square distribution. So chi square of alpha and nu degrees of freedom means a point on chi square distribution where probability after this point is equal to alpha. Okay? For example, chi square of 0 0.05 and 5. That's one of the examples. Chi squared of 0 0.05 and 5 degrees of freedom. Okay? So what I do in this table, that's the second difference, the one I'm going to say right now, that's the second difference between chi square table and Z table or normal table. So in normal table, you have probabilities inside and the numbers outside the table. Here, is the other way around. You have probabilities in the first row, numbers inside, and the first column is what? Degrees of freedom. Okay? So for this guy, I want to find probability 0.05 and 5 degrees of freedom. Go back to the table. This is 0.05. This is 5 degrees of freedom. So that's the number. Just want to make sure it's correct. Yeah. 11.07. Okay? Is it clear? Does it need to have a greater than or less than? Or can you? So actually, this is basically right hand side probability by definition. So uh, Any time that you see chi squared sub alpha, this is right hand side probability. So it's greater than. Yeah, exactly. That's the definition. Yeah, yeah. That's the definition of chi squared. Yeah. So you don't, we don't need to specify if it is left or right. It's always right. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, good. So there are some interesting property or, or like fact uh, that we use a lot in um, statistics and sampling distributions. So let's say you have a bunch of standard normal distributions. Z1 up to Zk, I think, here. Yes. 
So all of them are NID. Again, I stands for what? Independent. So they should be independent. With mean zero and a standard deviation one. Okay? So let me start actually with uh, only one of them. So if I have only Z1, then Z1 is squared, we can show follows a chi-square distribution with one degrees of freedom. So what it says, if you have a, a standard normal random variable, if you square that, it follows a chi-square distribution. That's the relationship between normal distribution and chi-square distribution. Okay? Does that make sense? And you can, you can, the proof is not difficult, but we just don't show it here in class. If you are interested, I can show you um, the proof after class. Uh, so that's for one. What if I have a bunch of them? So what I'm going to do, I squared each of them and I add them up. Okay? Then I have chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. Okay? So chi square distribution with 1, and I have k of them, add them up, it's chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. Okay? So if I want to follow the notation on the slides, I should put this in parentheses. Okay? Any questions? Do you run the risk of like losing any information if you were to go backwards instead of squaring your normal distribution if you took your chi squared and Yeah, actually so you, we don't usually go backward in that sense, yeah. If you have a bunch of things and you want to kind of like fuse them into one, and that's basically the, the method of your, the, the fusion method that you are using, then you can say, okay, I can find probability associated with that. And that probability is based on chi square. Okay? But backward is going to be difficult, I know. Unless you make some assumptions. Okay. Uh, another property is if you have a bunch of independent chi square distributions. So each x is a chi square distribution with degrees of freedom of nu i. Okay? If you add them up, again you get another chi square distribution with the summation of degrees of freedom. That's it. Okay? Does it make sense? Any questions? So these are very important. We use it uh, like uh, in the next few weeks a lot. Okay. Let's see. Calculate the following quantities. The first one we already calculated. Let's see the second one. Probability of summation of eight standard normal random variables squared greater than 1.34. By the way, we can add the most important assumption here that they are independent. So XIs are independent. Okay? So let me write this down. XI are normally independent, uh, normally independently distributed random variable with mu and sigma squared. Okay? So I use, what should I do? Exactly. So let's do it this way. So what is this guy here? It's a standard normal distribution, okay? I call it zi. So I want to find i from 1 to 8, zi squared greater than 1.34, okay? So that's zi. Now, remember the first fact, okay? If I have summation of zi's, it follows a chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom. So what is the degrees of freedom here? 
it's A. So it's a chi-square distribution with A degrees of freedom. Greater than 1.34, I want to find the probability. Okay, I'll go back to table. Okay, A degrees of freedom, 1.34. Okay, so what is the probability associated with that? Point. Nine nine five. Okay, and since I'm looking at the greater than, it means right hand side, and that's exactly what the probability I'm looking for, because the table gives me the right hand side probabilities. Okay. Any questions? Where one point three four and eight, like the part A. So this guy. Uh, I'm sorry. This 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 guy. I'm sorry. This guy is chi squared of 0.995 and 8 degrees of freedom. Yeah, that's another way to look it up. However, look at these numbers. So we don't have all probabilities. You may get some basically numbers. Let's say here for 8 degrees of freedom, I'm looking for two. Two is not here. So in this case, you need to use software, Excel, or any software to find that probability. Okay? Is it clear? Any questions? Go ahead. To change the 1.34 when you did a transformation into chi-squared, it's just... I didn't do any transformation. It's, so I didn't subtract mu and sigma. It was like this. If you look at the, the problem statement, it's already subtracted. So I didn't do any subtraction or basically division in one side. And because it's already there. Okay? That's the problem statement. It's not like XI and then I do mu subtract mu and divide by standard deviation. Okay? Otherwise we need to do it on both sides. That's correct. Already like normalized like in that way? Uh, no, not really. So that's just one simple example. You will see more complicated example coming. Okay? Mm -hmm. All those will be less than, but the tables for chi-squared will be greater than? Exactly. <laughs> that's correct. Is there a reason for that? Or? That's a good question. I've never, I've never <laughs> got it. I don't know. <laughs> that's actually good. I mean... In most engineering statistics uh, book or engineering statistics book, they use z, uh, feet, uh, phi table in, for the left side and z table for the, I mean, a chi square table, a t table, and f table for the right side. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The left side isn't. Equal to the right. Oh yeah, yeah. The right That's... side trails, and it's dominated more by certain parts. Actually, actually. So if if this is this, uh, okay, you're right. This is not symmetric, but the the reason is not because of uh, being or not being symmetric. Because t distribution that you will see on Friday, it's symmetric, but still we just care about the right side. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have two minutes. Uh, I guess um, I'm gonna just stop. Here and uh, we continue on Friday.